This is a strange one. It's basically a GH5S in a box, and I didn't see that coming at all. I mean, to be fair, compact cinema box cameras have been getting very popular. There's the micro cinema camera from Blackmagic, and also the Z cam range. They've been getting really popular. And now Lumix are getting in on the act. I've seen from some of the forums that a lot of people waiting patiently for a GH6 are getting quite angry that this isn't the camera they've been patiently waiting for. But I think this is really interesting. And the timing might be really clever. The GBH1, no, GH5 in a box. No, B. GH1, that's it. B, GH1, definitely. Ta -da. First thing you notice, it's much smaller than you think it's going to be, especially when it looks as though it's got a fan in it, like an S1H, but it feels chunky, solid, like a metal cube. We've got twin SD card slots for internal recording at 4K, 10 bit, and 60p. The buttons are all flush and neat with a GH5 style menu wheel. And there's a hot shoe as well, which will take the XLR1 adapter for when you need more than the standard 3.5mm audio input. And talking of connections, we've got a lot. There's three BNCs here with SDI output, timecode and genlock. And under another flap, you've got full size HDMI which will give you 4K 422 10-bit output at 60p. And yes, the SDI output and the HDMI output will run at the same time, so you could have a separate monitor and a recorder running together. You've also got USB 3, and on the other side, there's an Ethernet, a headphone jack, and a mic jack. Four out of the five faces on this are covered in quarter 20 threads, which should make clamping things to this really easy, or indeed, this to things. I'm not even sure you'd need a cage, even when running monitors and handles, recorders, viewfinders, microphones, plenty. It looks like this BGH-1 could be the brain of a very flexible cinema camera system. And I did start by adding a handle and a recorder monitor just so I could go out and shoot at my favorite spots. The colours and the dynamic range are up to the usual GH5S quality. They look great. And the BGH1 comes with Vlog L as standard, and apparently the specs are quoting 13 stops of dynamic range, which is one extra stop over the GH5S. Because the BGH1 is using exactly the same sensor as a GH5S, I suspect this extra stop of dynamic range comes from tweaking the Vlog a bit. All the usual Lumix picture profiles are included in the BGH1, along with the tweaked CineLike D2 and CineLike V2 that we first saw in the S5. And I think they're still my favorite. Now, obviously, I am a little biased here because I still use and love the look from my old GH5. There's something about the Panasonic color science which just feels very filmic to me. The low light performance of the BGH1 with the dual native ISOs looks very similar to the GH5S, possibly slightly cleaner. Strangely, I'm not going to waste too much of your time talking about the picture quality you can get from this camera because you've probably already seen the pictures. The quality is every bit as good as you get from a GH5S and possibly slightly better. And the things that interest me about this camera are not the similarities to a conventional camera, it's the differences. This camera is not a hybrid camera that happens to shoot good video. This is a dedicated video tool that gets a lot more interesting the more you look at it. I mean, yes, you can build this up into a very flexible cinema system. And I found it comfortable and easy to use in that way, but that isn't what this camera is to me. This camera is about two things, form factor and connectivity. This is about being small enough to clamp in unusual spaces, inside vehicles, on a drone, or the perfect shape for a gimbal. It's all about working remotely with Ethernet or controlling via USB. 
multi-camera lives, fixed studio rigs, or even remote wildlife. There's a new version of Lumix Tether coming out with this camera, and it supports multiple cameras. You can control up to 12 BGH-1s over USB or Ethernet. And if you've got the hardware, you can even power the camera over Ethernet, and possibly with a firmware upgrade, use it for IP streaming at the same time. It's easy to adjust almost everything while looking at the live picture, but I love the smooth way Panasonic cameras adjust the ISO in auto. Being able to run your speed and your aperture in manual mode while leaving the ISO to help with levels will be a great help to many running multiple cameras on their own. And if I dim one light here, you can see that the compensation of the ISO is so smooth, it's actually useful. You can also double click on the screen and pull focus remotely, which I think works well. And talking of focus, the BGH-1 uses the updated AF system we first saw on the S5. So I realise this might be a contentious point, but I've tried my simple focus test all over again. I'm just a glutton for punishment. Having watched a lot of YouTubers running zigzags around fields with the S5, I carefully considered the likely use for this camera. So this time, I was only interested in looking at face eye detection. The camera was in CineLite D2 profile and 4K at just 25p, and I left all the focus settings in their default off state. I tried multiple moves, and the BGH-1 never failed to follow my face, For the sort of work I imagine this camera will be mainly doing, I think the focus works really well, possibly even better than the S5, maybe because of the smaller sensor. You're now looking at me through the BGH-1 and a 25mm lens at f1.7. What do you think? Is the AF working? Is there hunting in the background? Can I move around and have the camera track me automatically? The auto exposure is also being done with auto ISO, and I think it works really well. So I have a feeling that this is the sort of mode that this camera will be used in quite a bit. Imagine a new normal with corporate videos all being run remotely, possibly over ethernet, maybe multiple cameras, and even multiple locations, and all being done with one very hardworking director. And then imagine a client that doesn't want any of that to look like a Zoom call. They want it to look like proper cinema quality that you'd get with a proper camera. Suddenly, the BGH-1 makes a lot of sense. And we haven't started talking about the possibilities of remote time-lapse or working in tight situations. If I'm looking for something to moan about, I wish Panasonic would offer us the option of a small touchscreen monitor to go with this camera. Imagine how good it would be if you could connect through the hot shoe. And maybe the cost of the camera, including the optional monitor, should be about the same as they're selling the camera for now, which in the UK is about £1,900. I think that's about the cost of one small monitor too expensive. And finally, Panasonic have decided to publicly release the SDK with this camera. That's the software development kit, and that allows anybody to write software which will control this camera. Or even completely new apps that open up possibilities and allow us to do things we haven't even thought of yet. It's a very smart move. So if I was to sum up this camera in just one word, it would be flexible. And if I was to ask just one question. B S one H. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.